All right, good day. Happy end of winter, even though it's feeling like spring here in Southern Oregon. My name's Don Tipping. I'm here at Seven Seeds Farm, which is the home of Siskiyou Seeds, which is a small family-run bioregional organic seed company. We produce most of the seed here on our farm, and a really important part of understanding how to plant seeds is what do you plant them in? So. I've done this a few times, uh, but I'll, I'll do it because I'm sure I miss things every time. I wanted to just share a little bit of the process about how we um, plant our seeds here and the technique that I've evolved over the last almost 25 years of farming. So I'm going to walk through the steps of making soil blocks and then I'll pick up the, the camera and show you some close-ups of what we're doing here. This uh, device here is called a soil blocker, and this particular one makes 20 one and one quarter inch blocks with a small indentation in it. I've had this tool for probably about 20 years. Um, had to do really minimal maintenance to it, so I really like it. I'm pretty sure you can get them online. It's called a soil blocker. and. Just a really simple apparatus that has this handle here and a spring up here. And then when you press it down, it pushes blocks of soil out. But you can see I already have some here. And they have a small indentation in them. And the beauty of soil blocks is, for one, you can get away from plastic. You can see the uh, flat is made out of wood here. I just make these out of scrap wood. We're constantly building and tearing things apart here on the farm, as are probably many of you. I like to get as many uses out of the wood as I can. So you can see I picked up a, a, one of the blocks here and it, it holds itself together really well. And the blocker forms them and then has a little air space in between each one. And the benefit of that is it allows the plants, uh, the roots to air prune. They air, roots don't like to grow into free space unless you're an air plant, but we don't really grow any of those here. So the plant, uh, if this is the edge of the block, the roots grow to the edge and then they're just waiting there until it goes into the ground. Whereas in a typical uh, plug tray, like you can see this type of thing, uh, the roots tend to do what we call the flower pot effect. They they grow out and they hit the edge of the plastic and then they spiral around. So I've noticed uh, in doing side-by-side -side comparisons in the field that transplants grown with soil blocks, you put them in the ground and they just keep growing. Whereas the plug trays or cell trays as some people call them, the plants just sit there in what we call transplant shock as the roots reorient how to grow. Uh, another benefit of the soil blocks is this amount of soil is equivalent to twice as much as this. And as a general rule of thumb we follow is that the small transplant has about one month of fertility and growing space per cubic inch of soil. So we actually are putting out twice as much compost, hence fertility, with the plant right at the site by using soil blocks. And again, getting away from plastic, uh, which is a, something I personally strive for and I imagine a number of you might be striving for as well. Um, it, it, I find I'm constantly picking up little bits of plastic all over the farm as everything's constantly biodegrading uh, and, and breaking down. Whereas when these wooden trays are done, I can just bust them up or have my kids bust them up and use them as kindling in our wood stove uh, or just let the compost. So I, I like things that are you know, from nature, I feel like I'm constantly trying to learn from nature's gesture and how nature has these highly complex systems that um, there are emergent properties as a result of all of that complexity interacting. Whereas it seems like a lot of our industrial human civilization, we create very complicated systems which require a lot of complicated um, answers to fix as we are all aware we're facing climate change and how to fix that. And my hunch is that we should just grow more plants and trees in particular, but we gotta start somewhere. So today we're starting with planting some spinach. Uh, I'm 
been working on this population of a, a spinach cross for the last I don't know, decade or so, and I call it Popeye. And for those of you that are my age or older, you remember Popeye and olive oil. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press out some blocks so I can show you how this works. So I, I've prepared this soil mix is a little more moist than perhaps you might otherwise, but that's what is required for the blocks to form. So you can see I'm squeezing it pretty hard. There's a little bit of water coming out, but not too much. And um, after I do this, I'll show you uh, kind of what our soil is comprised of. But pretty much we just make it out of compost, sand, and eggshells. So I take my blocker, I squish it down in there, twist it, lift it gently up to the side. I've got a old drywall kind of tool here. Um, scrape off the extra soil, put it in place, and press down while pulling up. And then I rinse off my blocker in between sets. So I'll do another one. Show you what's up. Sometimes I, I miss the holes, I just don't quite do it right. I'm usually not videoing while I'm doing this. So one thing about soil blocks is you they do take more time to create, but you have healthier plants. And then another uh, aspect I've learned, it, so here you can see I'm pressing it out. I believe this size flat can, I can get about six of these or 20 each, so that's 120 plants. And then they have the indentation already there for the seed. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate how I would plant seeds. I take the seed packet, I make a little crease, and um, and that allows the seeds to kind of line up there. You don't need a fancy seeder. And then I just cruise along and tap. I put I, I aim for two seeds in there. I know my germination is going to be probably somewhere in the 80 to 100 percent range. Um, but I don't want to just put one seed in each because I want to make sure that I have a plant growing in each soil block. And because we grow seed, I have plenty of seed. So I'm not too concerned about using too much. One benefit of having more plants per cell is that in two or three weeks when they're sprouting, I can come along or one of my lovely helpers skilled, strong helpers can help with thinning, which is basically pinching off any extra plants and leaving the largest, which I would imagine is the most vigorously growing, the one that germinated first, uh, to grow. So you're actually doing plant breeding or selection right there at the first stage. Sometimes I'll have a block that just doesn't quite do it, but you know, it's basically Play-Doh. Those of you who have kids, you get into this. So that one there, you can see I just put it back together. So now I've got two to, I'd say, four seeds in each one. And then I grab some dry potting soil, and I just sprinkle this over the top. The person I learned this from, uh, Mary Alionis, over at Whistling Duck Farm here in the Applegate, she... Uh, I imagine she probably still does this, I'm not sure, but when I learned it from her 20 years ago, she would use perlite for this step. But I, being, I guess, just lazy and efficient and trying to be stubbornly doing everything myself, I don't like buying stuff. So, unless I absolutely have to. And I feel like that's part of how you uh, are successful with farming or homesteading or small scale anything is, res um, you know, ingenuity. So I don't use perlite, but she would just take perlite and cover the whole thing, and it would work pretty well. But here you can see I've covered all the plants, uh, the seeds, and they will grow really well. Sorry about that noise. Now I, uh, I'm going to pick up the camera and just show you a little bit about our potting soil process. So what I make potting soil out of, these are the ingredients. It's so about 10 parts compost. This is just old compost here from the farm that we make out of animal manures like sheep, ducks, chickens, goat manure. I bring in a little bit of organic dairy manure. And then any of our crop residues, old corn stalks, garlic tops, leaves, whatever. Sand for drainage. Because if you don't have good drainage, you're gonna get algae 
growing on the soil surface. And then I, we save up all of our eggshells and I crush them and they're a source of calcium. And why this is important is that 80% of the cell wall, 70 to 80% of most living things is calcium. So if you have a strong calcium element in your plant, my thinking, I'm not a scientist, I just pretend to be one, is that it will resist um, being penetrated by funguses and viruses and diseases. And so here's, you can see down here, here's all our eggshells and I just crush them and then we we'll run them through some kind of screen like that. Um, here's the potting soil mix for soil blocks and you can see how it's, um, about like bread dough. That's about the consistency I do. And a little close up of the soil blocker here. You can see that there's these plastic inserts. And then looking at the bottom, see how they just, they make this little indentation. Very sturdy tool made by the English. And then uh, we'll go ahead and look down here at one of, what one of the soil blocks looks like. You can see it's just this little unit. Uh, you can see my spinach seed in there. I've got to cover it a little better. But they hold up pretty well. Uh, I, one of the other uh, sources of information about this is the, Elliot Coleman, and he has a very special recipe about how to do soil blocks. Again, I showed you my potting soil mix, and we've been doing it for years, and it works great. Um, here's what the potting soil looks like before I've moistened it. Uh, I just run it through a half-inch hardware cloth. Again, compost, sand, and eggshells. Pretty simple, and just, uh, sorry for moving the camera quick, just a little heads up, we're Siskiyou Seeds. We grow, breed, trial, select, and try and distribute awesome seeds all over the place. And, you know, so sometimes we're starting off, I'm just sharing the process here, total transparency. I've been really interested in offering some more chicories and radicchio. So this is Chicoria Rosa Italiana from Franchi, which is an Italian seed company. I'm gonna grow that out. Those are red dandelions in the trade. And then we'll have seed this fall of that variety. So anyhow, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you here some of these that are growing on here. Um, these are poppies that are uh, growing up. This is Icelandic poppy, Iceland poppy. Uh, we have a, a few different species of poppies and you can see these really need thinning. Look at how many plants are growing in some of these. We're about at that stage. Another thing I'd like to point out, not enough sand went in this particular batch. See that green moss growing on there? That's why you want to have plenty of sand in there for drainage. Because what I found sometimes with the uh, sunny and then watering cycles that happen here in the greenhouse, that algae can actually form like a film that then in the sun becomes hard and it can girdle your plants or or compromise the integrity of the stem so uh real important and you can see this particular soil mix uh had some perlite i think we had some around and maybe we didn't have sand at the time so you can see that the perlite doesn't work as well for drainage in my experience as sand and sand's readily available um you can see we're still doing some in plug trays. It's really fast to fill plug trays. I want to come back around to this point. And it takes longer to create the soil blocks. But what I find in the field, these are really tricky. We have to get a knife out or some tool to sort of pry out the plant or risk tearing it from its roots through rough handling in the field. So you're spending more time in the field dealing with plug trays than you are these. These are really sturdy and easy to pull out and you know if you need to toss them across the bed to a helper they work really well. So one way I look at it is I have more time this time of year than I do later in the spring when I'm transplanting. So if I can save time later by spending more time now to do it properly that's what I aim to do. So Making soil blocks, I found, is a good bet, even though we still resort to this. But later in the field, we're kind of like struggling and cursing at these things as they are creating more work for us. And I guess that's a good uh, point to end on is let's take the time to do it right the first time instead of 
later having to do more time and more effort because we didn't take the time to be thoughtful and considerate of the best way possible to do things. And that speaks to our time, that speaks to using natural materials instead of plastics made from petroleum, that speaks to all of our thoughts and actions that ultimately hopefully will result in a loving, kind, compassionate society infused with wisdom, which is what I'd like to see for each and every one of us in our gardens and our families. So all blessings to you pan around here. Uh, again, my name is Don Tipping. We're here at Siskiyou Seeds. There'll be a link to our website and the availability of seeds and, that we have for the year. And I really hope all the best for you and your family. All right. Happy spring. Peace.